Hey guys, Mike Verkess with Clackamas Fire here along with Dr. Ward, and we're actually going to talk about Haldol. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah. We, we've been hearing about Haldol for years, um, and more importantly, we're going to talk a little bit about anapsine, right? Anapsine, as you guys know, we've kept in our protocols for years, sort of on the <laughs> praying that to maybe we back. would be able to get that back someday. But alas, we've finally put uh, anapsine to its final rest, and we're going to introduce Haldol as sort of a... Um, a backup for Geodon and things like that. So do you want to kind of walk us through Haldol and how sure. it works and why we're going to use it? So again, back to the future. So Haldol was the psychiatric drug we used when I was a resident, um, I won't say how many years ago. It's, it's still been around, people still use it. There's a lot of psychiatric patients where Haldol or Haloperidol is the only medication that actually works for them. It also has a, um, a formulation where they can give shots every two weeks so it, it's been around, but we haven't been using it uh, mostly for its kind of its side effect profile. But the issue that's come up this year is that there's rumors that Geodon is going to be in shortage. So we need, we're trying to be proactive with these uh, medication shortages yeah. and come up with alternatives ahead of time so we're not scrambling and try to figure things out in like a week or yeah. so. That's a good idea. So we look back and, you know, when we're, we're going to bring back Haloperidol. Again, some agencies may switch to Haloperidol from Geodon, whether there's a shortage or not. It's, it's certainly less expensive. It's a little bit faster acting. It's more potent than Geodon. So some agencies may choose to switch now. Um, but again, most uh, agents, so in, as far as the protocol goes, you're just going to use, if your agency drops Geodon for whatever reason, then they're going to use Haldol in, uh, instead of Geodon in, uh, to uh, restrain uh, psychiatric So same, same indications they would have used right. Geodon for, they're just right. going to use Haldol now. So again, it's a tried and true antipsychotic, um, years, decades of experience with it. Now there's always a, a good and bad, so it is more potent and faster than Geodon is, uh, which also means it has more potent side effects, and that's why we've, con we've used it less and less over the years. So some of the mechanisms, and it's, Geodon is more specific for the receptors that calm patients down. Geodon is an older drug and is less specific for those receptors, so it has other side effects. So one of them is it's an alpha blocker, which can cause hypotension. Usually it's pretty mild. They just need some fluids to support their blood pressure, so that's usually not a big deal. The, the, Side effect that is a big deal is it's a potassium channel blocker, which Geodon is, Zyprexa is, even and Zofran an is. Anapsine was. Yeah. Yep, and anapsine. So it'll prolong your QT interval. So the side effect from that is you can go into torsad, arrhythmia, loose pulses, which is a big deal. So people that have died from being physically and chemically restrained, some of those patients were asphyxiated from having you know, four people on top of them and chokeholds. Some of them actually died, probably died from torsades from the antipsychotics they received. So it's just something we need to be aware of. And just remember in the protocol for Geodon, is as soon as the patient was calm enough, you need to get uh, leads on them so you can monitor their rhythm. So we're going to go over a quick way to kind of monitor the QT interval uh, when the, once the patient is calm enough to be on the monitor. So you have your RR interval, which so try to get a lead that has uh, good upright R waves. Um, and so the RR interval is between obvious two uh, preceding R waves. And you want to look at halfway between. So there, the interval is about four big boxes. Mm -hmm. So about two big boxes is halfway between them. If the T wave is starting to creep through that halfway mark, the QT interval is getting uh, too long yeah. and the patient may go into torsad. So there's just something to monitor. Again, the treatment for a prolonged QT or torsad is uh, magnesium if they are still have a, a pulse and blood pressure. If not, and they're in torsad, then they need to be shocked, obviously. Um, so that's just a quick way you can also, even if you just have four leads on, you can run a 12 lead and get the interval measured. And again, a prolonged QT interval corrected is greater than 500 milliseconds. Yeah. 
So again, uh, haloperidol or haldol, it's very potent sedative, so it will be additive if the patient has taken other sedatives like alcohol, benzodiazepines, heroin, or if you've also given them Versed um, for an extremely agitated patient. So this will be, they'll be more sedated than they will with uh, the Argeodon doses. There's also more likely to have dystonic reactions. And if anyone remembers the napsine, when we were using a napsine a lot, uh, we, you know, you'd always get a certain percentage of the patients would get dystonic reactions, which are strong contractions, usually of their head and neck muscles, sometimes their whole torso. Very painful, very disturbing. The treatment for that is diphenhydramine or Benadryl. Another reaction which is more rare is it's called akesthesia, and it's a feeling of extreme restlessness where people feel like they're skin is crawling or they need to jump out of their skin. And patients will tell you it's the worst feeling they've ever had in their life. Mm. You can try Benadryl for that, but frequently they need a benzodiazepine like midazolam, which you need to call in for. Uh, the other precaution with all these kind of antipsychotic medications, they lower your seizure threshold. So just be careful in patients that have a history of epilepsy or they have medications like um, speed or cocaine on board that could lower their seizure threshold. But obviously, your main um, goal is to get the patient sedated, so that takes priority, but just be aware of that, those conditions. Again, this will be used the same as we're using Geodon now. Again, the dosages for adults are five to 10 milligrams. You can give it IV, IO, or IM, and you can repeat up to 20 milligrams total. For pediatric dosing, you need to call online medical control. But again, this, this would be appropriate for very agitated teenagers um, uh, to get them under control. So that's it on haloperidol, a new medication that we, uh, some agencies may, or may need. Um, again, depending on whether we have uh, availability of GDON. Mm -hmm.